Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. My name is Olisi, the son of Nobe, and I'm here to give an update uh, on an impending court case involving members of the Citizens Coalition for Change. Uh, if you're not from Zimbabwe and you're wondering what Citizens Coalition for Change is, uh, that is Zimbabwe's mainstream opposition party, the biggest opposition party based on the results of the August 2023 elections you will know that zimbabwe held its election uh, in august it was supposed to be a one-day event held on the 23rd of august but because of a shambles in the zimbabwean election management body that is the zimbabwean electoral commission it had to spill over to the next day after ballot papers could not be delivered in time in a number of uh, areas that are deemed to be the opposition stronghold which eventually were won by the opposition party so triple c after winning uh, around 101 seats including proportional representation uh, in parliament uh, then went into an implosion whereby a man claiming to be the party's secretary general wrote to the speaker of parliament recalling some members of parliament from the party about 16 of them uh, he claimed that they had ceased to be members of the opposition party and therefore had to be recalled so what happened is that the speaker of parliament uh, did indeed go ahead and recall the said members of parliament and declared their seats vacant and he also has written to the election officers the provincial election officers in the mp's respective uh, constituencies indicating that they should arrange a by-election in those particular um constituencies so the president of zimbabwe then last month gazetted uh, a statutory instrument stating that they are going to be indeed by elections he did that uh, as per the demands of the zimbabwean electoral laws so he gazetted that um, the seventh of this month is going to be the day on which the nomination court is going to sit uh, and uh, process papers of those who seek to stand in the by-elections and then he also gazetted the 9th of december as the date on which the by-elections are going to be um held so pending that now the party that is triple c or members of triple c have then gone to court to challenge their expulsion from parliament to challenge their recalls because they say that the man who recalled them by the name Sengezo Chabang is not a, a member of triple c they claim that he is not uh, the secretary general the interim secretary general that he claims to be and therefore their recalls were unconstitutional were illegal and therefore invalid they seek uh, a court uh, ruling that will favor their argument so they've gone to court they've taken Sengezo Chabangu to court they have taken the speaker of parliament to court so i just want to give a brief uh, background from an organization called zinfect uh, which then gets into the gist of this whole thing it goes deep into why we we are at this position where we are right now why triple c in that is it finds itself in that position so they say uh, they first look at the loopholes that allowed uh, these recalls to happen resulting in this in what appears to be a, a protracted court battle which is going to follow uh, after the recalls uh, so they then uh, get into how triple c will be able to contest the elections after that uh, the organizational disputes uh, in parties in general and under what grounds a parliamentary seat can become vacant and what does 
parliament require to recognize communication from a political party uh, what prevents a seat declared uh, to be vacant from being filled what if the courts rule in favor of the recalls so this is uh, a fact based coverage from them so before we go ahead i would like to request that you subscribe to this channel like this video and share it so on the loopholes uh in fact say that it is a clear uh it is a lack of clear organizational structures in the triple c which nelson chamisa that is advocate chamisa has held up as part of the party's strategic uh, ambiguity uh, which has left triple c open to a disputable situation where people can claim to hold certain positions uh, in the movement chamisa says there's no confusion as he is the only one who can confirm any such claim he accuses the speaker of parliament uh, that is advocate jacob mudenda who is a politburo member of the ruling zanu pf party uh, of playing politics to help drive zanu pf towards a uh, toothless control of parliament and they've also accused the Sengeso Chabang of being uh, a member of the forever associates of zimbabwe uh, paid to destabilize the opposition although they don't have uh, any proof which they've given to the people other than just labeling him uh so a toothless majority just for those who may want to know why zanu pf would be uh, thought to be trying to drive towards a toothless majority will uh, help zanu pf to effect some constitutional changes without requiring support from the opposition so zanu pf failed to garner a toothless majority in the elections that just ended so there is belief that they're trying all means necessary to try and get that to this majority because you will remember that without uh, constitutional changes emerson nangakwa is saving his last term or even though he does change the constitution constitutionally is not allowed to benefit from any changes but we suspect that uh, or there is suspicion that he wants to change the constitution so that he will be able to appoint his successor uh, how has triple c able to contest elections that is what zim fact uh, then looks at there are no laws in Zimbabwe that compel political parties to register in order to legally exist. The only obligatory registration required is with the election management body, that is the Zimbabwean Electoral Commission, for purposes of fielding candidates and contesting elections. The ZEC is obliged to recognize any political organization that is an association of persons set out to secure the election of one or more of its members to the position of state president or to be a member of a local authority or parliament according to the electoral act uh, a political organization should have at least uh, a minimum of 500 members as set out by as set by zec members from at least five of the country's 10 provinces objectives that are consistent with the principles of democracy and the rule of law and commitment to non-violence now in the case of organizational disputes in parties uh, and the absence of clear protocols on handling internal uh, contestations aggrieved parties can approach the court to resolve the issues just as the triple c uh, members who have been recalled have done under what grounds can a parliamentary seat become vacant so we're looking at the speaker having declared having recalled these people and then declared the seats that they held vacant so section 129 of the zimbabwean constitution which is what singers which have used uh, can a, a seat can become vacant on condition that this on, on, on dissolution of parliament, written resignation notice by a member to the president of the senate or to the speaker of parliament, member ceases to qualify for registration as a voter, being absent from this, their seat for 21 consecutive days, certified to be mentally disordered or intellectually handicapped. For Zimbabwe, the most commonly used clause has been section 129 subsection 1 subsection k which applies when a member of parliament ceases to belong to the political party under which sponsored their candidacy so this is what chabang claims that these people that he recalled have now ceased to be members of triple c he doesn't prefer any argument as to how they ceased to be members of parliament but we are told that he gave the speaker of parliament some minutes of some meetings that they allegedly set uh, as uh, an executive uh, he also 
gave the Speaker of Parliament some a, a constitution that he claims to be a triple C constitution. So what does Parliament require to recognize communication from a political party or movement? So you will remember that there is an ongoing argument that the Speaker of Parliament should not have done what he did unless and until he realized that this benefited ZANU-PF or he was part of the grand scheme or, or the grand uh, plan to recall and dissect or de incapacitate uh, the opposition. So in 2015, when MTCT evoked section 129, subsection 1, sub uh, section K, to remove MPs who were deemed to no longer represent the party's interest that was under President their president then, Mokhen Swangirai, the Speaker of Parliament said, I must reiterate, as I have done in a previous ruling, that the notification to the Speaker by the party that a member has ceased to, to represent its interest in the National Assembly and Parliament is all that is required at law to create a vacancy and for the Speaker to declare a seat vacant. I will repeat that. I must reiterate, as I have done in a previous ruling, that the notification to the Speaker by the party that a member is seized to represent its interest in the National Assembly and Parliament is all that is required at law to create a vacancy and for the Speaker to declare the seat vacant. So you will know that Triple C claimed that they didn't have any structures. So having declared that, the Speaker of Parliament doesn't know who is who within Triple C. So when he received a letter on the letterhead of Triple C, notifying him that certain members had been recalled because they had ceased to be members of Parliament and signed by a, a person claiming to be the interim Secretary General of the party and with the constitution of the party, the Speaker of Parliament didn't have anything else to do based on this precedence that he set in 2015 and he therefore recalled the members in question. So it's up to them to go to court to prove that Chabau is not what he claims to be. Then the court will based not on the politicking of these uh, warring factions but based on the facts that each member or each side produces the court will reach a ruling because this is now a legal case it's no longer a political case as has been done fighting it through social media fighting it through the media so what prevents a seat declared to be vacant from being filled if legal proceedings are launched to deal with the matter, there will be delays in filling the declared vacancies until the courts have delivered a final ruling. So now that the case has been court, brought to court, uh, if the court delays in making its ruling, we are likely to see these seats uh, ceasing to be, or these recalls or the statutory instrument being set aside and the members continuing, or we are likely to see them remain outside parliament until Chabang has been proved to be an imposter as he is said to be by members of triple c but we don't know because uh, we await what the court will say to see what happens uh, so what if the courts rule in favor of the recall the zimbabwe electoral commission will resume the necessary proceedings to complete the filling in of the vacant seats by fielding nominations and holding by elections of the available seats so this is where we are right now uh, if the recalls are upheld then the declared date of nomination court sitting and by elections will go ahead but if it delays uh, there will be delays in filling the declared vacancies until the courts have delivered a final ruling which means that if the court goes beyond the dates that have been declared by the president that is the 7th of this month and the 9th of december these seats will remain vacant uh, but we don't know if these members will be allowed back. We don't think they will until the case has been finalized, after which then they will, they will be uh, allowed back uh, into parliament. Uh, and then we look at Shabang. You will remember that uh, the court case is a result of some triple C members who were recalled from parliament, led by uh, Binga uh, MP, Prince Dubego Sibanda having gone to court to then claim that he is not a member uh, of Triple C and is not the Secretary General of the party even on an interim basis as he claims. So they submitted a court case. Now yes, which in his argument uh, 
having recalled 15 MPs, 9 senators, and 17 councillors uh, in his argument uh, over claims that he's an imposter. Uh, he says he expected these uh, members to include the triple C as either an accompanying co-applicant or a respondent. So he says the failure to cite the political party that is the responsibility to recall makes this application a non-starter and fatally defective and it ought to be dismissed uh, that is in his notice of opposition as the acute uh, points in Limin. Uh, so in his opposition he said the recalled, uh, the recalled MP's application for declaratory relief is a disguised application for review of the speaker's decision to recall them including his office he claims that the recalled MPs are attempting to overturn the Speaker's decision to recall them, which he says cannot be reviewed at law. He also says that the recalled MPs alleged he is not a member of Triple C, but they failed to attach the Constitution or any other documents that speak to or proves whether he is a member or not and whether they are members or not. He says, by the same token, they have not attached the relevant documents showing that he is not the interim secretary general and whether or not these positions exist. He further says they have not attached their membership cards, membership registers, nor proffered any explanation for the absence of those. So you will remember that Triple C doesn't have membership cards. They don't have membership registers. So I think he's taking advantage of that loophole to then argue his case in Parliament. So he says in the absence of those, uh, the recalled MPs failed to prove their case. More so, it becomes a classic dispute of facts which cannot be resolved from the papers and should have been clearly foreseen by the applicants. He, however, claims that he was appointed along with others as a designated officer and attaches documentation uh, to that effect as annexures ST2 to show that. He said the recalled MPs relied on letters allegedly authored by Triple C President Nelson Chamisa, purportedly representing the Triple C and directed at the Speaker and Zek, which are cited as Anesha PT1, PT3, PTS, and PT6 in the application. He claims those letters constitute hearsay evidence, which is inadmissible as affidavits. He also says the party is not an applicant in these proceedings and neither has it been cited as a respondent and it cannot challenge his authority to write the call letter and the contents, contents thereof. He argues that the relief sought by the recalled MPs is incompetent. He says the relief sought fails to set aside the actions of the party, but rather seeks to set aside his actions, which actions and authority were de derived from the party. That is what he claims. And he says in terms of, sub -sec of section 129, subsection K of the Constitution, it is the party and only the party that can recall. Without an order setting aside the actions of the party or interdicting the party and interdict against him or the Speaker and the Zek is incompetent and even if granted will be of no effect. That is his argument. He also said, despite pleas made by the recalled MPs that their case is urgent, meaning it cannot wait, he contends that there is nothing urgent about this matter. The applicants allege that the matter is urgent in paragraph 49.2, which simply relates to the existence of a vacancy which should be filled within 90 days. The filling of vacancies is a process regulated and provided for in terms of the law reads uh, his opposition notice so this is what his argument is and this is what is expected to present uh, in court in court we don't know what exactly is going to happen but we watch this uh, with a keen interest because it is going to change the dynamics of zimbabwean politics and is going to either strengthen triple c or destroy it so this is what we will continue to update you and we are hoping to have uh, a, an interview with Sengezo Chabangu this weekend on this channel. Stay tuned, but don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it.